Welcome back to the Microbial Comedy Club, folks. Today, we've got a real sneaky pathogen for you. Collie, the Vibrio cholerae. Let's dive into how this crafty bacterium causes watery diarrhea, shall we? Meet Collie, our charming and highly modal friend. Collie is a gram-negative, comma-shaped bacterium with a distinctive appearance. Collie uses his single polar flagellum to swim through the digestive tract. Vibrio cholerae, classified based on differences in the O antigen of its lipopolysaccharide, has two main troublemaking serogroups, O1 and O139. But don't worry, O139 is no longer a major threat. Kali thrives in warm, salty water and is often associated with poor sanitation and contaminated water sources. Once ingested, Kali travels through the stomach to reach the small intestine. Kali can resist the stomach acid. Do you know what else can resist stomach acidity? Right, Helicobacter pylori, which causes stomach ulcers. And who else? We've attended their night previously in the Microbial Comedy Club. Right. It's Sally the Salmonella, a common cause of food poisoning. Vibrio cholerae colonize the small intestine using its tiny hair-like structures, which is called pili, to stick to the walls. Coli has several virulence factors, like the toxin-coregulated pilus and accessory colonization factor, but the most important and powerful is the cholera toxin. The cholera toxin released into the intestinal epithelial cells, inducing chloride ions excretion. Here's what happens next. These chloride ions are pumped out of the cells and into the lumen of the intestine. This creates an imbalance because the concentration of chloride ions outside the cells becomes much higher than inside. Water naturally follows chloride ions due to osmosis, trying to balance the concentration on both sides of the cell walls. So, when the cells pump out chloride ions, water flows into the intestine to follow these ions. This influx of water leads to a flood in the intestine, causing the hallmark symptom of cholera, profuse, watery diarrhea. This hallmark symptom, profuse, watery diarrhea, often described as rice water stool. This rapid fluid loss can lead to severe dehydration and even hypovolemic shock if not treated quickly. Vomiting may start before or after the diarrhea begins, and some people might have abdominal cramping, though it's usually not as painful as dysentery. Severe cholera, also called cholera gravis, can cause a watery stool with flecks of mucus, often having a fishy odor. This diarrhea is typically painless without the straining seen in other infections. With severe fluid and electrolyte loss, patients can develop hypovolemic shock within hours. Signs include sunken eyes, dry mouth, cold clammy skin, decreased skin turgor, and even wrinkled hands and feet, sometimes called washerwoman's hands. Deep breathing, known as kusmal breathing, might occur due to acidosis. Now, let's talk about the complications. The most critical complication is hypovolemia, or severe dehydration and electrolyte loss. This can lead to shock and organ failure. Pneumonia is another serious issue, especially in children, often caused by vomiting and aspiration. Chronic enteropathy and malnutrition can develop in children under 5. Pregnant women face increased risks of miscarriage, premature delivery, and stillbirth. There's also a rare form called cholera cica, where fluid builds up inside the intestines, leading to circulatory collapse and death without diarrhea. And although it's rare, bacteremia, or the spread of bacteria into the bloodstream, can occur. Diagnosing cholera involves stool cultures, rapid tests like stool dipsticks, or dark field microscopy. Remember, in endemic areas, cholera should be suspected in anyone with severe watery diarrhea. Treatment focuses on fluid management, oral rehydration solutions for mild cases, and urgent IV fluids for severe dehydration are crucial. Antibiotics like macrolides, fluoroquinolones, and tetracyclines help in severe cases. But remember, sufficient feeding, zinc, and vitamin A supplementation are also key, especially for children. Let's talk about how our body fights Kali. 
The immune system, especially our innate immunity cells, acts quickly. Neutrophils rush to the site to engulf and destroy Kali. But sometimes, Kali is too fast and clever, which is why medical intervention is crucial. Early treatment saves lives. Preventing cholera outbreaks involves providing clean water, good sanitation, and vaccination campaigns. The cholera vaccine is a powerful tool in this fight. It helps the body develop immunity against Kali, reducing the severity and spread of the disease. The cholera vaccine works by introducing a weakened or killed form of Vibrio cholera into the body. This doesn't cause the disease, but it stimulates the immune system to produce antibodies against Kali. These antibodies stay in the body, ready to fight off the real bacteria if it tries to invade. Vaccination not only protects individuals, but also helps create herd immunity, making it harder for cholera to spread in the community. It's a key part of public health strategies to control and prevent cholera outbreaks. That's all for today, folks. Remember, stay hydrated, stay informed, get vaccinated, and keep those pathogens at bay. Like and subscribe for more infectious laughs and learning at the Microbial Comedy Club.